That's a huge tree. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel and Mark. Hi. So this weekend where I'm going to be doing some vlogging, we have been invited to come back to Richmond, um, which is in Wayne County, Indiana. And Nancy, hi Nancy. She works for the Bureau of Tourism and she has invited us to come back and explore and do some more vlogging. So this weekend, these next couple of vlogs are going to be fall vlogs. Things that you can do in Wayne County in the fall. We're gonna be going to some wineries. We're gonna be going to some pumpkin patches and some Amish uh, bakeries and some museums that we that we didn't get a chance to go into last time. We're also going to go to the Richmond Rose Garden really, really quick because the roses are in full bloom right now. And I just wanted to show you that again. We're going to check out some murals. It's going to be a jam-packed couple days of seeing some cool things in Richmond, Indiana, Wayne County, Indiana. So come along with us for an adventure. Okay, we have arrived here in Richmond, Indiana to the Model T Museum. It's going to be the first stop on today's adventure. And I've been reading up a little bit about Henry Ford and why he called the Model T the Model T. Let me know in the comments. We're probably going to figure out when we're inside and we'll talk about it. But let me know in the comments if you know why. Here's the thing. Do you know why the Model T was called the Model T? And do you know why... The second model was called the Model A. I already know, but I'm, I'm testing you to see if you know before we go inside. So let's go on in the Model 2 Museum. And I wanted to say real quick too, the beautiful thing or one of the great things about Richmond um, is they completely embrace the murals. Pretty much on every building there is, there's a mural and it's fantastic. So. The Model T Museum right here was opened up in, well, originally it was in 2017 at a different location and it opened up here at this location. To, yeah, to, what did I say? Oh, 2007. And it's moved here uh, in 2012. There's also um, parts of the museum across the street. And I will put all of the links for all the museums that we, and places that we go to in the description. Let's see, here are the hours. And then admission is $7 for adults, $5 for students. Children under five are free. Actually, we're gonna start in the other mu in the other museum down this ramp, but look at the murals. Star Piano Company. Oh, fun fact, we're gonna be staying at the Jennett Museum, or the Jennett Mansion, I'm sorry, the Jennett Mansion, which in um, the last time we came to Richmond, uh, we went to the Jazz Walk of Fame, the Star Piano Company. I'll link that video down below if you wanted to watch that. But we're staying at the Jennet Mansion, so that's going to be exciting. And also, the Model T Museum, because we were like, what's the Model T Museum doing in Richmond? Well, the Model T Museum is actually where the Model T Ford Club of America is located in. This is their, their headquarters. This is a 1909 Touring. The original price of this car was $850. Beautiful. Wow. Oh, look, here's Roadster. Hi, Road. Will you let me pet you, Roadster? Oh, oh he loves pets. Roadster is the museum cat here at the Model T Museum. <laughs> he uh, lives up to his name? Yes, he does. <laughs> yes, he does. Hi, buddy. <laughs> Just took off, didn't you, buddy? He's do you ever find him in like taking a nap he in any of the cars? <laughs> he does not typically get into the car. He's a good boy. He loves to be out in the garage. Mm. He comes in and his little paws will be all dirty. Hi. And... So how did he become the shop cat or we, the museum cat? About three years ago, we had a little kitten that came and adopted us. Mm -hmm. And we named him Henry Ford. Oh, yeah. And we had him for about 
two or three years, and then he ended up getting really sick. Mm. And he was an amazing yeah. museum cat. And, well, we missed him. Yeah. So we ended up adopting Roadster, Roadster. from a local shelter. And he's an orange and white cat. Orange cats, are they can be a little, they're uh, a little crazy. They're a little crazy. <laughs> they're a little crazy, boy. Oh, yeah, good boy. So, yeah, it's like a, almost like a teal green. Yes, all That's the an cars, ar- when they were originally made, came in green, red, blue, and gray. So once Henry Ford perfected the assembly line and being able to mass produce mm-hmm. them, he found the color black that was cheaper, mm-hmm. it dried quicker, it was prettier, and so for years, they only came in black. Yeah, didn't he say you can have any color you want as, as long, long as it's black? black. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, wow. These are some of the original colors that you could have gotten a part of it. So this was like the showroom? This was the showroom in the dealership. And what wow. I do is a mock-up of what oh, a what dealership the... office would have looked like. Oh, wow. Oh, this is cool, though, too. They've got all these bricks from from different Ford factories. So here is a Ford from the Ford Cincinnati plant, Memphis, T- Tennessee, a wooden floor block. From Jacksonville, Florida. Another Jacksonville, Florida. I wonder if there's any in here from, uh, in like Detroit. That's pretty cool. Wooden floor block. That is really neat. There's another brick from the Ford Highland Park plant. That is pretty neat. They've got, how many cars in, are in the museum total? Um, about 48 total. 48 total. But you go, there's also an airplane also an and a bus. And a well, snowmobile? It's a depot hack. <laughs> a, okay. It's a depot hack, but yeah, it can carry up to six people. Wow. We do this, have a snowmobile. This wooden one. This is a Huckster wagon. It would have been used for like Mark. Farm, yeah. The market, wow. Stuff. It was like oak. Oak yes. wood. I think it's oak. And look at that windshield. <laughs> it just pops out. Wow. And the wood wheels. Yeah, that was your air conditioning <laughs> back in the day. Yeah. Oh, this and is this really, is really cool. Our tutor. And it's an award winning car. Oh, wow. Look at the wood. Very pristine. It was very well taken care of and restored. So, is this that black collar that you were yes. referring to? Yes. 1926 T Tudor. 20 horsepower, four cylinder. Top speed around 40 miles an hour. <laughs> I've been in them at 40. It's not too bad. Not, not too bad. Now, it yeah. Feels, it feels 40. You can see the nickname for the Model T's were the Tin Lizzie. Now, Look at how on the inside. It's very plush. I don't think that was original, but it's very plush on the inside. But you really do got to, I don't know if these side doors open. You really do got to. Crawl back in there, don't you? That's beautiful. The makeup of the quadricycle was used in RCT's production of O. Henry and the Tin Lizzie. Yep. So after they were done with that, they donated it to the museum. Oh, so this was used in the movie? It was used in, on, in the play production. In the play yeah. production, in the play yeah. production. Yeah, that was this, that That's was that this poster. There, yeah. Right here. And we kind of did a recreation of Henry's garage where he originally came up with the quadricycle. And the funny story was, is he built it in the garage but couldn't get it out the door. (laughs) And the guy he was renting the garage from was so excited about it, he brought over the sledgehammer and they made the door opening wider (laughs) so he could get it out. Wow. Here is the theater room. I like all of the sparkles. <laughs> we try to make it as close to what a 1920s theater would have looked oh, like. Nice. From the velvet curtains. Velvet curtains. So you can sit in here and watch a little bit of the... It's about a five minute movie. Oh, well, we'll sit and watch it. I'm not going to get it on film, but just know that you can come in here and do a little bit of history before you see the rest of the museum. It kind of gives you a little bit of a basis. 
So it was pretty interesting from parts of that video, you know, Henry Ford, when he started the, you know, his assembly line for the Model Ts, the trickle down effect that it had on the middle class, you know, he kind of was a trendsetter in starting the, the $5 a day for the workers, but you know, he had his plants, his assembly lines, his car manufacturing, which, you know, kind of led to tourism and then maintenance on the cars, which created jobs. The gas stations, the, the you know, us touring and doing the things that we do, the roadside America, it really helped trickle down to a lot of different aspects. So if you think about it, it's really kind of cool. He kind of created, I guess, the middle class way of life. Um, made making affordable cars, paying his employees an affordable, uh, a fair wage. So it's just really kind of cool. This portion of the museum is, what is this? This is the... This is our farm room. The farm room. And you can see where you could take the standard Model T and modify it to ah. whatever needs that you had. Like, this one was turned into a tractor. Oh my, yeah, it sure was. <laughs> this looks like it would be something from cars. Yeah. You know, it's like those are his little eyeballs. So this is like a true, what do they call that, Mark? When you when you turn something in, customize, customize it. Yeah. 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 That's oh my gosh. Thing about the Model T, it was affordable, and you can customize it to fit any need that you had. Wow, 1925 Fordson. Okay, this company was founded in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Letter later rebranded as the Traxon Company. And they began making conversion kits for these tractors. There it is. Full crawler for Fordsons. Wow. This is a grocery truck. And look, we've got our skeleton man driving it. So, again, it's like basically the, like the chassis. Mm -hmm. And then it's just customized. This is kind of like yeah. that wooden one we saw in the other room. Just, they would just build it. However, they needed to wow. attach it to the chassis. And it's a very heavy truck. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, my gosh, I can't imagine how much that tractor yeah. weighs. Oh, and we got a dump truck. We have a dump truck. And this one is a 1917. No, 1917. Wow. You know, just like looking at the tires and stuff, like there's no tread. Yeah. But the roads were different. The roads were very different. <laughs> But see, this one has treads. And look at the wheels. It's like a wagon wheel. Those are wooden. And see, this one is metal. Now, this one is like a flat bread, flatbed yes. farm truck, 1925. And it had the size that could, they could take it all. To, yeah, oh, yeah, to, to, to haul different yeah. types of things. I mean, if you think about it, how it just transformed, you know, farming life. Everything was so, you know, with the horse and carriage, and this really made it more efficient. Yes. Oh, look, there's a picture of Henry Ford with others with a Fordson tractor. Just this, this one. Oh, so that one's a Fordson too, right? Yes. So this one's, yeah, just that like this one right here. Tractor, yeah. 1918. That's amazing. Look, they got the plow. Don't get your hands too close to there, girl. Just the branding and stuff on here. I mean, they really made these just, they're, they're beautiful to look at. You know, thinking of something that was so utilitarian like this and how beautiful they are. They're just like works of art. This one's 1924 um, custom model T, and it said that a lot of catalogs, like the uh Montgomery Ward or probably Sears and Roebuck not Mon Mostly Sears. Sears carried conversions that you could add customize your own I mean this one you can really tell you can really tell like up here it looks like you know a car but then obviously back there looks more like a tractor especially with this tractor seat could you imagine sitting in that all day <laughs> working the fields that would be a bumpy ride probably just really really cool so now we're in the vintage garage, and they've got a cutaway chassis, so you can kind of see the inner workings um, of the motor. And then we were just talking, we've got several of these. We have. We own several of those when we had our brick and mortar open. So is that where the gas went? That is the <laughs> gas tank, and that's That's pretty big. 
<laughs> oh, well, that'd keep you warm, probably. <laughs> no, I don't know anything about cars. Gas is cold, but when it's when the car's turned on. Oh, but still, I wouldn't think that would be the most wisest place to keep it. I don't. There was there wasn't as many accidents back. Then. True. True. It was low speed accident. So you can see underneath these cars, there's we've got the the oil pans because these cars are still in working order. They maintain them and they make sure that they they all run and they all work. And she was saying that people, other Model T enthusiasts, they could come in here and work and tinker on they their cars. Work and tinker. We've got all the tools and everything that they would need. That is really pretty neat. That's and they're a, all threading dice set. Everything is cataloged, so you can see what they are, and all the tools are all cataloged. Yeah, it kind of, you can smell, like yeah. it smells like a Well, and that's thanks to Lenny. A here. garage. We, we had one Lenny is our 19 depot pack, mm. and he's what we would consider our daily driver. We get him out and about. He gives rides, does parades. Oh, nice. And stuff, and if you want to, you can sit in it. Oh, yes. We got to sit in it. We have to sit in it. Don't touch the silver button, Misty. Boy, that steering wheel's right there, isn't it? It is right there. There isn't any adjustments. <laughs> and I love that its name, it's a depot hack. Yeah. I don't know why I like that it's a hack. It, it doesn't seem like it's a hack. You seem like you're pretty cool. So this is pretty neat. You can have a little photo op here with the uh, Model T. Okay, so Mark was saying that all these machines in here, they're all connected through those leather belts. So they really, it's really, you know, you can work on it just like they did. So it's it's very authentic. I bet these guys just love coming in here and tinkering with their cars and stuff. And again, I was talking about all the branding on everything. I love like even on the floorboards here. The Ford branding on everything it's pretty neat i mean even the steering wheels are a work of art look at the christmas lights all over this one so some of these are used for parades here's an ambulance 1924 model t ambulance we've got uncle sam back there model t touring Original price, $295. I mean, that was one of the things that was really important to Henry Ford. He wanted to make these cars that were affordable. This one's cool, this red. This one's got like a little truck. Yeah, this is the yeah, Roadster. The, the truck bed conversion. Yeah. It. It's so pretty. It's so funny. I've been told by several people that the, price the truck bed that you could go and get and made the conversion that's how we came up with the nickname of a pickup truck ah so you picked up your truck bed wow i was like i always thought that was really funny that is neat <laughs> so the model t roadster was ford's most affordable stock body option um, oh yeah here's the snowmobile mail in the winter and still stay warm so he built that out of cabinets from his barn oh my gosh look it's got the chain tires on it <laughs> Wow. Wow. This is gorgeous. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> wow. And the Speedsters, we've got a yellow and a red one. Still a Model T chassis on there. And then they've got their gift shop here where you can purchase items. I love my Model T. You can purchase items online too. Yes. yes. Our, items. Our gift shop, our full gift shop is also available online. Great. And I will link everything down in the description as well. They've got books and postcards. So now we are heading over to where we thought we were going to start. This is the main building. This building just kind of gives you a timeline here too. But you can see the Ford facts. Cars Ford made before the Model T. So we have the Model A, Model AC. Model B. There's only 500 produced. What is like the the most coveted car, the Ford car that collectors really are? Um, I think it's a, probably a mix between the Model T and the Model A. Yeah, which is weird because you'd think that they would want a Model B because there's only 500 produced. Yeah, 
you know. Out of all of those, I'm really not sure how many are still on the road. Yeah. Henry Ford's goal was to create a car that was affordable, simple to operate. Well, yeah. I don't know about that, Henry. And durable. In 1908, the Model T sold for 850 while competing cars cost 2000 to $3,000. Okay. You gonna do it? That sounds like an elephant. That's not really an awooga and awooga. That's more of a ha ha. Yeah. Oh, wow. You try it for us and it for sure works, but. <laughs> <laughs> You would be you'd be honking it at everybody, and everyone would be like, "What is that? It sounds like an elephant." All right, we just got back into the car. The, I'm telling you what, you may think, "Oh, Mile T Museum." I don't want to go there. I don't like anything about cars, I don't care, because I don't really like care about cars that much either. That was amazing to be able to get that up close and personal, and. I don't know, it just kind of piques your interest in it. And like, now I want to go and like, I'll go down my deep dive of everything Henry Ford. And listen, we know Henry Ford, he was a cheapskate, you know? He didn't, he wanted, he was a penny pincher. But he really, really did a lot for the middle class, you know, paid them a fair wage. And it was kind of a trickle down as far as like making the roads better. That created jobs for people just the the mechanics to work on the cars um the the traveling and the roadside attractions the hotels the gas stations so it was just a, a a little bit more about him yeah you know he didn't get along he, he and his son had some falling outs and he left the company for a while and ended up coming back but it's just kind of a fascinating glimpse into his life because he was he was a genius he really really was so anyway model t museum did you like it mark yeah liked it a lot highly highly recommend so our next stop is earlham college and we are gonna see some history and a big beaver history and a big beaver all right now we are on the beautiful college campus of earlham college and we are getting ready to go into the Joseph Moore Museum. Now, Joseph Moore Museum was established in 1847. And in 1907, it was renamed the Joseph Moore Museum after, guess who? Joseph Moore. He was a one of the college presidents and he was a professor of geology. So we're gonna see Mastodon. We're gonna see a dinosaur, a mummy. A big beaver it's got they've got the I don't know if it's the world's largest or at least Indiana's largest I guess we'll find out fossilized beaver so we're gonna see that so there's uh, some hands-on exhibits and things like that and the the museum is fully staffed by Earlham College students so oh look look can you see big elephant. that's a mastodon mark we're gonna go in take a peek and see some cool things so we've got we're stepping in oh my gosh look at all of look at that big moose and that big buffalo but they've got a lot of hands-on things here for kids what is an insect head thorax abdomen abdomen let me go back in my preschool teaching days okay so a bee is an insect Ooh, praying mantis so an insect has six legs an exoskeleton three body section head thorax abdomen and wings so head i don't know i don't think you're an insect <laughs> yes i was wrong praying mantis do you know praying mantis eats their mate mm -hmm. yeah he eats them do you think a scorpion no i think it is it's got eight legs oh <laughs> I wasn't counting they have a lot of activities look they have even little crafts over here that you can make little fireflies. Look at this. Mark, can I make a firefly? So fireflies are a group of bugs in the lampride family. Um, they use their glow to attract. I'm gonna make a pink one. You need to be smarter than me to do this. We're gonna glue our eyeballs on. This is our souvenir, Mark at Earlham College. Then, this, oh look at that, we made our 
little firefly. That's fun. Okay, we have mammal. Oh, look at that big bear. Oh my gosh, look at the sand. See, this is just amazing. And so many things for little kids. Oh, look at that. Though They don't have eyeballs, Mark. What happened to their eyeballs? You have eyeballs. Oh, that's kind of creepy. Okay, let's make a, um, this, oh, these are like rubbery. Groundhog. Oh, look at that. How, Mark, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck? If a woodchuck could chuck wood. And then we got some skeletons. Oh, there's a cat skeleton. That wouldn't be Mr. Fluffer Pants because my cat doesn't have a tail. Oh, look at the little dancing turtle. <laughs> do, do, do. Oh, look at the mastodon. Oh my goodness, what in the world is that? Could you, that would scare, that's the thing of nightmares. It was the giant ground sloth. Could you imagine? Holy tamale. Oh, look at that little sloth right there though. I like him. Were these an actual thing? Yeah. What'd you do if you came that across that in the had? in the wild? On the ice age, the ground sloth. No, was that was age? Sid. He was not this big. Was that what he's supposed to be? I don't think so. Th researchers theorize that M. Jeffersoni carried their young on their backs. Well, that was that was nice. They have two traits that make them unlike any of other animal. Young sloths had cone-shaped teeth that became more cylindrical and peg-like as they matured. So they've been found in 32 states. Wow. One theory suggests that rapid warming of the climate led to the loss of food. Another theory suggests that humans arrived in North America and overhunted. That probably is what happened, I'm gonna assume. It's like a bear sloth, but that's huge. He was a ground sloth from... Oh, but he was not as big as this well, guy. It's a cartoon. There's a beaver. Mark, here's the giant beaver. That's a big beaver. <laughs> giant beavers lived aquatic lifestyles. They made their homes in ponds and lakes, fringed by wetlands, marshes, and wet meadows. Like little hippos, they trudled along the bottom of lakes and ponds, feeding on the roots of plants. So in the fall of 1889, some farmers in eastern part of Randolph County, Indiana, were opening a very large ditch to drain a swampy tract, locally known as the Dismal. The contractor came upon a skeleton which, on account of its standing in the natural position and on account of its wonderful tusks, awakened a desire to save all the parts that might be found. It says, before the discovery of our giant beaver, remains have been scarce and fragmented at more than 87 percent complete it's the most complete giant beaver skeleton in the world not just indiana in the world saber tooth cat like that what, what he on ice age too yeah saber tooth cat meow 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 look at his little bitty tail could you imagine that coming up up to you in the wild and then here is an Allosaurus. This is cute. They've got this I know, to match, up to with match the animals. So the mastodon would go here. We'll put that here. And then saber tooth tiger, we'll put him, we'll put him back over here where he was, where we found him. Allosaurus oh, yeah. or Allosaurus. He goes here. Oh, golly gee. That's the most frightening thing I think I have ever seen. A giant ground sloth. You go there, buddy. You are, go, he's a wolf. You go right here with your wolf. A regular beaver. A regular beaver, right here. I mean, that's the beaver. Nah, we're gonna put him here. Is that it? Yeah. Oh, we'll have to put these all back for the next, for the next kids <laughs> that come. But this is an Allosaurus, that's 155 to 145 million years old. They hunted the big plant eater, so they would eat the Brach Brachiosaurus and the Stegosaurus. Why is it this color though? Are these actual bones or is it a cast? Well, we don't know for sure. It's not Tyrannosaurus's close cousin. They do, it does look a lot like a Tyrannosaurus rest, but not as big. 
And Allosaurus and Tyrannosaurus are two of the most famous meeting in dinosaurs. Both stood on two legs and had relatively small arms, <laughs> large skulls, and big mouths full of intimidating sharp teeth, while Allosaurus and Tyrannosaurus are both theropods. Uh, Tyrannosaurus was part of a different group which became dominant predators during the mid Cretaceous period. Cretaceous period. 75 million years after the Allosaurus appeared, Tyrannosaurus was more closely related to sparrows and pigeons than to the Allosaurus. So we're talking about Indiana wetlands here. These are all birds that are found in the Indiana wetlands. You can see in 1780s, you can see how many wetlands were in Indiana. And this is compared to 1986. So not as many which is pretty sad. There's a snow goose and a great horned owl. And look at these little, these are all birds of Indiana. The wood thrush, the meadow lark. Look how big that woodpecker is, my word. We got more birds over here. This is a cool display. Look at all these birds. But see, you've got more interactive displays here for the kids little coloring pages and little bird songs when we come over here the raptors i should have got a raptor when that commercial i should have got a <laughs> it's gonna bug me now anyway there's the bald eagle my gosh look at this owl it kind of looked that kind of looks like me. Confused, don't know what's going on, where you're at. Should have bought a falcon, something like that. There's a golden eagle, so beautiful. These are so pretty. I always like to look at little birds' feet. Could you imagine? Ugh, that, would, that would tear you up. There's a whooping crane. Whoop, whoop, whoop. whoop. And then, ooh, we got some glowy rocks. Ooh, beautiful. The devil's corkscrew. This fossilized object was found upright in western Nebraska and formed during the lower Mycene epoch. I, there's all words I can't pronounce. It represents the fossilized burrow of an extinct terrestrial beaver that lived like a prairie dog in Nebraska. So these glow. Ooh, look at the opal. That's beautiful. And see, you can pick it up and touch it, and it's brown. And then you put it underneath this black light, and it turns green. Calcite glows yellow. Again, pull it out. Oh, oh there we go. Fluorite, highlight, hackmanite. It's really, really cool. Look at how beautiful this is. And see, you can touch this. Some things you can touch and some things you can't. But this, they've got a little book on fossils. And then they've got all of these species and these little, those little fossils in there. It's really neat. You should definitely bring your kids here. It says, where's Jomo? Can you find Jomo hidden in the museum? He's in plain sight, but don't move him. We don't want to disturb our animals. We could win a prize? Well, we got to find him. We won't win a prize, but we gotta find Jomo the snake. What? Oh, there he is. <laughs> Hi, Jomo. I also wanted to show you over here too. They've got this light screen here with these little x-rays. Oops. Infant kangaroo. So you can pull them up and then see the the spines and the bones. And I also have this little TV here. To, well, it's a magnifying glass. So we got a screen and then, I wonder if I put my hand here, scroll out. Ooh, there's my skin. That's kind of scary. Let's, let's, ooh, snake skin. Kind of like your skin. Oh, <laughs> that wasn't very nice. Heading down to the discovery room and it says, please touch. And the Egyptian mummy is down here too. So we're gonna to touch, we're not gonna to touch the mummy, I'm certain. <laughs> we can't, certainly can't touch the mummy, but. So 
Oh, yeah. Ancient Egypt, et but still, more activities for kids to do. You, this is a, an amazing place to come to bring your kids. How to read a sarcophagus. An Egyptian sarcophagus or coffin is richly decorated with meaningful images. The paintings that cover Tian's sarcophagus help us better understand the beliefs of her people and their relationship to life after death. You can see how Tian was protected as she traveled to the afterlife. Ancient Egyptians believed after death they would find another life similar to those on earth. So you can see, there she is. She's still pretty wrapped. I mean, they haven't tried to disturb her wrappings at all. I'm certain she's probably been. Well, they've done an x-ray of her. Or that's what I meant, an x-ray. Behind you there. Oh, there's her x-ray. And look, it says, use the mirror to see the top of Tian's coffin. On the head of the coffin, there's an image of a scarab beetle. Scarab or dung beetle represented the god Kerpi and the creator who traveled across the sky at night through the underworld. So can we see? Hi. Oh, just that on the back right yeah, there? That big, like that the big image? Okay. Yeah, that's like the wings of the dung. Yeah, dung like right beetle. here. Yeah. I mean, just looking at this, when we saw one at the um, the Richmond Historical Museum, they actually they have a mummy there as well. But just the way that the coffin was designed and how these pegs kept it together, and all of this original paintings, that's amazing to me. The sarcophagus itself is amazing, but then under you know where the body is. And all of these hieroglyphics on here tell a story about her. We've got the uh, the pair of black jackals. You can see right there. It says that jackals are among the oldest sacred symbols in Egypt, first appearing almost 7,000 years ago. Jackals close to close relatives of wolves and dogs are omnivorous scavengers, often seen around cemeteries. This may be why Egyptians identified them with the afterlife. Jackals were protectors of the dead, and Anubis, the god, the Egyptian god of the underworld, is depicted with a jackal's head. And over here on the other side, they have the live reptiles. They are doing a little bit of renovation right now, but you can handle the snakes. You gotta go upstairs and ask if you can hold one. I'm not gonna do that today. I don't mind holding snakes. Snakes don't bother me. I've held lots of snakes before. Oh, here's a bearded dragon, Nax. Hi, Nax. He's out. Here's Pingu. Hi, buddy. Pingu, bearded dragon. Calvin and Hobbes, the turtles. There's Calvin and Squirtle. Where's Squirtle? Oh, he's right there. He's a big wow. boy. He really blends in with the rocks, doesn't he? He's a common snapping turtle. And this is Julius Squeezer. <laughs> I don't see him. Oh no, he's he's all curled up in his little cave. You can kind of see him in there. He's a boa constrictor. Julius Squeezer. And then the browsing bench. And here, more activities for kids to do. It's like you're in the under under the sea. I'll bet you've never seen anything like me. You're a kind of a sea. Oh, this seahorse. Leafy sea dragon. So it's kind of, kind of, really kind of cool. And the nice thing about it, it's all staffed by Earlham College students. So this is giving them a lot of, you know, practice and research and making things a little bit more easier for a child to understand. Well, that was an amazing museum for free, free admission. Bring your kids there, let them explore, learn a little bit. It's amazing. Completely amazing. So this is a must stop. It's a beautiful campus. Beautiful campus. Must stop in here for sure. All right. We just got done having lunch with our hostess, Nancy and Julie. Hi, Nancy and Julie. This is one place that we didn't get, have time to go to when we were here last and I really wanted to go to it and it is. It's Indiana's high point. Now this is a rock off of the road, but back in this little wooded area is Indiana's highest point. And you wouldn't think, I mean, we live in Southern Indiana where there's a lot of hills and I wouldn't, they're not mountains, they're hills, but some of them are pretty high. And 
I would have thought that Brown County, Indiana would have been where the highest point in Indiana, but it's not. Back in this little wooded, wooded area is Indiana's high point. Elevation is 1,257 feet above sea level. Which isn't a lot. It's not a lot, but we have a little card that says that, I can't remember what it was, that says so that within this county, Wayne, Wayne County, County, a third of the elevation from here to the Gulf, Gulf of Mexico is, goes down a third of elevation just within this county. Yeah, just right here. In this grove of trees surrounded by fields. Please sign, is there a little paper in there? Oh, yay. Oh, it's got one of those little cards like we have. Oh, yeah. So this is the card. It's Wayne County's Hoosier Hill. You can see what the coordinates are, the elevation. Um, and then we're going to sign the Misty Show. So you guys are here with us when we sign. Aww. Oh, what's this? There's nobody on there. Oh, well, we got to go on there. The date today is October 7th. 11th. October. I never know where I'm at or what day it is. Um, I see a critter. Where? I saw it walk past there. Is it the Bigfoot? I bet it was Bigfoot. No, it was walking on four legs. It was not a bear. Because there's no bears here. That was really bizarre. Anyway, that's on private property. But they have created this little alcove in here. So you can come and have a little picnic at, on Indiana's High Point. You can sit on the bench. It says highpointersfoundation.org. Don't write Dr. Phil on the bench. Don't do that. Education, support, and conservation of the highest point in each of the 50 United States in cooperation with the High Pointers Club. Highpointers.org. That's cool. So they donated this bench. Did you get us logged in, sir? Let's, let's check it out. Misty Show, Bedford, Indiana. You guys signed us with us. There's a tractor. But this is really cool, right? Just a little, little stop, totally free. Okay, our next stop is at Hayes Arboretum, which I've apparently been saying Arboretum. But um, there are a lot of different things that you can do here. It is an Arboretum, so it is where trees and plants are planted. It is not a place where you should pick things up. It's a nature center, so we leave things where they're at. They have several walking trails, and they also have an auto tour. So this building right here that I just showed you is the nature center. So we're gonna go in there first and have a look around and um, then decide if we're gonna do the auto tour. So the auto tour is $5 per vehicle. And then you use a token. Oh, and they got free cookies. <laughs> free cookies. Like I said, they do have a lot of trails that you can go on. But it says Stanley Wolcott Hayes was born in 1865 in Granville, Ohio. He said he saw a need for improved railway safety. He invented, manufactured, and marketed railroad safety devices. He owned the Hayes Track Appliance Company, and he moved it to Richmond, Indiana, in 1911. During his 60-year career, he was granted over 80 patents. Inside the Nature Center, we've got this tree that was 68 years old. This huge tree. And then this one right here is 70. The larger section came from a tree that stood alone in the middle of a pasture. And the smaller one came from a crowded forest. So they're the same tree? Same yeah, kind same, of tree? Same. Just depends well, on where yeah. they were where they were grown. Yeah. Hmm. You, know, you always hear about counting the rings of the tree. Man, this one was four. This tree is 400 years old. It's a sycamore. Once living in Brookville, Indiana, it came from an area now flooded by the Brookville Reservoir. Because of its size, this tree right here was a major project to move from Brookville to its present location at the Arbor... Arb Arbor Edom. Arbor Edom. I'm going to say it wrong, but you can see from the center... It was, I don't know how long it took someone to count with these little magnifying glass to count all those rings. This is some pictures here of them moving the tree. But here's an um, an overhead view of the Arboretum. Arboretum. Golly gee. 
Arbor, eat them. The arbor's going to eat them. Yeah. Oh, look at this little play area. Oh, so this is another great activity area you can bring your kids to. Got these little lily pads and all kinds of books. Oh my gosh, felt board. Yeah, when I taught preschool, I lived for the felt board stories. The more you know, Arbor, eat them. No, that doesn't work that way, Mark. Oh, wow. Zipper and Ebony. Zipper and Ebony. This is Zipper. Hi, Zipper. Corn snake. Um, she wiggles her tail if she feels threatened. She'll wiggle, wiggle her tail to say, stay away. She's probably wiggling her tail. No, she's not. Corn snakes are non-venomous. And so are king snakes. This is Ebony. Hi, Ebony. See Ebony down there? The oh, yeah. She's shed her, shedding her skin. This is a really cute area in here to bring the kids to. I think we got a thing about birds up there. Beaver. Oh yeah, there's some beavers up there. So there's more little displays up there. This is a bird watching window. Oh, it sure is. Well, how nice. You can sit and watch the birds. Even put on a little fireplace. There's some more books to read. They also have this handy field guide. If you spot some of these birds. Look here, they've got, they've got these little backpacks here. And it says that you can become a nature explorer. Borrow an explorer backpack as you hike the trails. Items inside will help you explore the natural world. Please return your backpacks after your hike. Well, that's nice. Gabe walked the blue trail today. Gabe used the binoculars while Dad played Pokemon Go. Well, you know, they still got out in the in the wilderness. What else is in here? Oh, oh kitty cat. Oh. That might be a raccoon. Daddy long legs. So we've got a scavenger hunt in there. Butterflies and moths. Oh, Pencils. we're going to hug a tree. Pencils. Well, that's really, really nice that they provide that. Okay, so like I said, the uh, driving tour is $5 per vehicle. You get a token. We'll put our token in this little gate here. They have different stops where you can stop. And they have QR codes that explain some of the places that we're going to be stopping at. So let's go on a driving tour of the Arboretum. Good job. Mark's put our token in. Is that Smokey the Bear? No, nope, just Smokey Bear. Oh, there's lots of uh, squirrels. I do have the video. Um, we have set it up to where do a little bit of a hyperlapse. So when we get to a stopping point, then we'll stop and we'll explain what we're seeing. But until then, enjoy the video of the Arboretum. So one cool thing about Stanley Hayes, he was an entrepreneur and he invented, what was the part on the railroad that he invented? Some kind of safety railroad a safety, Yeah, but he was passionate about nature preservation and so he replanted these trees in this forest. He bought this plot of land and set out a goal to replant um, and repopulate this forest with all different kinds of trees and fauna and plant life. So it opened up to the public in the 1960s, right before his passing. We're also gonna be coming across, I think the next stop is the Arch, which was at one time, I believe, a high school. So we're, I think that's gonna be the next stop. All right, we just stopped here on the auto tour at this beautiful structure. It's called the Morton Arch. And it was actually moved here. It was originally, uh, decorated the entrance of the Morton Garfield School in downtown Richmond. And a night, yeah, it's right here. And in 1924, a fire closed the school permanently. John Harrington purchased the structure, took it apart, numbered it, and reconstructed it on Harrington's property. And then um, he sold the property soon after to Stanley Hayes. So this is from 1906. And then William White. He was the sculptor of the arch and he moved to America in 1888 and he settled in Bedford, Indiana, which is where Mark and I live. His work as talented stone carver would take him across the state into New York City. Examples of his work are the Morrison Reeves Library, the Vanderbilt Home, and the First Lutheran Church of Dayton, and the Morton Garfield School. But this is amazing. And this was actually the third place it's been because it was originally at the school and then moved to a one property and then finally moved here. It's beautiful. Look at how intricate the carvings are. 
on that. Isn't that amazing? It's beautiful though. It looks like it was just like, like it should have always been here. It's so pretty. But yeah, Bedford, Indiana connection. So at marker number three on the auto tour, like again, you can scan these QR codes. I'll put it down here in case you wanted to listen to it for yourself. But they um, were talking about during the Depression, you know, Stanley Hayes had a factory. He had the factory for the railroad part that he invented. And during the Great Depression, the factory had shut down. So he had originally had 13 miles of road built on his estate. Uh, most of the work was completed during the early part of the Great Depression. He hired his employees to help construct the road so they could continue to be getting paid during that time. And then in the 1960s, I do believe, yeah, 1963, Hayes Arboretum was open to the public. Over a thousand cars drove at one time this gravel road. And I guess they just kicked up a lot of dust and everything because there were so many cars there. And then over time, the trail was converted into the three mile trail that you can go on now. I also wanted to just show you and so you can listen because we're in October in Indiana and the leaves are starting to fall from the tree. So that's just a nice sound. And I wish you could smell. It smells good, doesn't it? It smells really good. It smells like, well, it smells like fall in Indiana, which is a good smell. So now we stopped at the tulip tree experiment. Back in the 1920s, Stanley Hayes wanted to know how the an oak tree, white oak tree, and a tulip tree, if they were planted together. The tulip trees grow really fast. Yeah. The oak trees grow really slow. And they wanted to see how they went, how they made it together. They said basically the oak trees would grow quicker and qu grow taller. This is a tulip tree. Yep, because the leaves look like a tulip. And, and then Indiana, oak tree. Indiana, Indiana tree. Is that maple? That's a maple. Ah. Uh. Guess again. Okay, let me see if I can find an oak tree on pure. I, I see about 10 of them. Oh my right gosh. There. That's oak. So that's I'm an oak tree. This one the tulip tree is an Indiana state tree. I guess I just didn't realize that they grew so tall. What trees? The tulip tree. Oh. The tulip trees. They said basically tulip trees would grow really straight, really fast. Yeah. And oak trees would grow really fat. So these were plant these trees were planted a hundred years ago, these tulip trees and oak, white oak trees. I mean I wonder what they're gonna look like in another hundred years. It's just fun. Even though I can't detect what the leaves are. But I I gave it a good try. And here he goes up on the tree. Hi Turkey. Alright, our next stop is the Woodland Chapel. There is a chapel here in the Arboretum that you can rent for a wedding. Now this part of the arboretum is all old growth. So it's been, I think she said some of the some of the trees have been here for over 500 years. So the first part of the arboretum was what Stanley Hayes had planted and this is all old growth. So here's the little chapel which is nice and you know you can come here for a wedding or if you just want to come down here for a little solitude in the forest. Oh, look at that big tree. Wow. I feel like I want to hug that tree. I know. That's what I was going to tell you. you gonna hug it? Oh. No, I was going to tell you to hug it. I don't know if I can. How, how can you hug that tree? That's a huge tree. I wonder what kind of tree this is. Is that an oak? Uh, nah, I think it is. I think it is. You're a big oak tree. I can hug two trees at the same time. If you want to go on a hike, the a lot of the, they just paved a trail, um, but most of them are not. So if you think that you want to go on a hike, wear the proper shoes. Don't be like Not me. those. Are you gonna give a lecture up there? Oh, you want me to? Hello, everyone in the forest. Thank you for being here today. I see that you wore the correct suit, shoes, sir. Good job for you. Hug a tree and talk to turkeys. That's your goal for today, but this is beautiful. And I was just, I was telling Mark that in a couple weeks, this is gonna be 
stunning because of the fall leaves. I mean, they're starting to change a little bit, but I just kind of want to sit here and, and not talk for a few minutes. Let's go to the scenic overlook. You ready? And then just down the ways here is the Pat Meyer Scenic Overlook. Oh, this is pretty. Look at that tree. That's a huge, this one right here, it's another oak tree. So here is the Pat Meyer. Here's Miss Pat Meyer. The trees in front of you are a relic of the forest that once covered most of Indiana. Left virtually undisturbed for centuries, some of these sugar maples and American beech trees were standing when European settler, settlers entered this land in the 1670s. A college professor in the 1960s uncovered a fossilized beached seed dating back 10,000 years, what some believe to be the last time a glacier covered this area. Old growth forests are an important and rare ecosystem in this modern era, and we ask that you help us to protect it for future generations to enjoy. So Pat Meyer, who this scenic overlook was named for, she, was na she loved nature, camping, and hiking. She was born January 31st, 19. 26. She's a lifelong resident of Richmond, Indiana. For 50 years, she was the director of Camp Wapi Kamiji, where she spent every summer connecting countless Girl Scouts to the outdoors. So when you think about it, this is what Indiana looked like before we came in and tore it all down. One thing I want to say too is, and it's something that I'm guilty of, I mean, in your local area where, you're, where you live, find a place like this. I am certain there are probably places within an hour radius where you could go and spend a little bit of time in the forest. We live very close to a state park that we were, we need to go and spend a little bit more time in. We used to camp there a lot, but just to go for the day and just kind of take in the nature and the trains. That's my challenge to you. Find some place locally where you can go spend a little time in the forest and hug a tree. It says me in the train. All right, so we're at the Richmond Rose Garden. I just wanted to pop in again because the roses are currently in full bloom. So I just wanted to share with those with you a little bit. There are over a thousand different varieties of roses that are planted here. The first plantings were done in 1987 and since then it's just grown immensely and there is a board of caretakers that do come out here and weed and take care and prune and do all the things that you need huh yeah there's a person over over here kind of working now it's all on a volunteer basis so i just wanted to show you some of the roses here again before we check into our airbnb and a lot of them have like I said, I can, included this in our, our first visit here to Richmond. Um, so I just wanted to show you them again. I thought they were pretty enough to be seen again. Here's the ketchup and mustard. I showed these the last time. They've got like a yellow interior. You, you can smell them a little bit better than what you could when we were here last. Here's impatient roses when we were here last, they were bloomed a little bit, but some of them, like, look at this one here. Look at how beautiful. But they have a lot of these benches around, so you can just come out here, grab a book, come out here, sit on the bench. Hello. Go into the gazebo. Just have a little bit of moments to yourself. It's beautiful. So 
So again, this is just another thing here in Richmond that you can do completely free. It doesn't cost any money to get into the park and to walk through the Rose Garden. So we're seeing a lot of things that you can absolutely do for free and things that are fun to do with kids um, while you're visiting Wayne County. And tomorrow, tomorrow is going to be another fun day. We're going to go to the pumpkin patch. We're gonna go to a couple wineries. We're gonna go to a an orchard, and we're going to an antique show tomorrow. So we have a lot of fun things that are gonna be planned for tomorrow. But the the vlog isn't over yet. We are going to stay at the Janet Mansion, and I'm so excited about it. I get a we get a meet up with Tina, who have, we decided the last time at the museum that her and I are became fast friends. Um, and then we're gonna go out to eat at a really good barbecue place tonight in Richmond. Oh, these look like little caterpillars. They do. Those are little peppers. Are those like peppers that you can eat? I don't know. Hmm. Somebody let me know in the comments. Are these little chilies that you can eat? I don't know. All right, guys, I am standing in front of the Janet mansion now i did a video and i will link it below where we did we went on the jazz walk which is star record company star pianos henry jennett was the founder of that company and he and his wife alice lived in the jennett mansion it was built in 1898 and it is now an airbnb slash private residence um, Tina is the owner of the mansion and she also runs the Richmond Historical Museum which is also in the vlog and I'll, I'll attach that one too it, which is an amazing museum you have to go there you have to go there <laughs> they've got the rat boy of Richmond at the Richmond Historical Museum so let me show you this building this house was built in 1895 and it is an Italianate style house and it's on a limestone foundation. It is over 9,000 square feet. Over 9,000 square feet. But it is just gorgeous and it is filled with star piano memorabilia. So we're going to go in the side entrance right here. They also have the, this blue structure right here is a carriage house that they do rent out as well. And I will link the Janet Mansion in the description if you are interested in coming and staying but like little details like look at the g i, I bet you they are these look 60s -ish. maybe but you never know so we're going to enter in the side entrance here no oh. welcome to the janet mansion now this is what the building looked like what the star piano factory looked like back in the day um, and when we went out there they just kind of like the first two floors but it's kind of a skeleton they have a farmer's market in there now and all of these buildings are no longer there but they this they made the star pianos and then once records became popular then they kind of switched it over to making records and I'm going to be able to show you both pieces but you go into this was probably maybe a parlor I wish Tina Tina was still here she could have given us a better much better tour than I could, but you can see these are all phonographs here from the Star Record Company in Richmond, Indiana. You crank it up and you play them. They even have some of the Janet records up on the wall. These are a lot of the walk, the Star Janet Walk of Fame. And then looky here, this antique baby grand 1927 star baby grand piano star richmond indiana and look at this fireplace Isn't this amazing and mark loved this little door here oh now you're just showing off i think this was the original this we were just standing out front okay okay this was the original entrance, so this would have been like the, the, the entrance area. So this that's where we just were standing outside would be the front door. And this beautiful field stone um, fireplace. And Mark loved this little corner door here. <laughs> but look at this. Isn't this beautiful? And all of the tile work. 
on the fireplaces. All the little touches in this gigantic mirror. Going through here, they do rent this out for events. Like I said, I will link their website down in the description in case you would want to, to rent this space out. We've got another star piano here. And Don't then, play it. And then this was added on to yep. the billiards room. I know, that's amazing. We got a little sink right here, which is really cool. Here is a picture of the mansion. So now we're going to go upstairs. There are three floors. The third floor is private residence. Oh, yeah, these blueprints were found of so the mansion. So these were blueprints, not of the original, but they yeah. said when they added when on they the added room on, on the right there, mm -hmm. they, uh, they had that. We have the whole entire second floor to our, ourselves, but here we have another star phonograph, a little fainting couch. This is a little porch up here that you could look out upon, but it's cl currently closed. There's that beautiful chandelier again. Up here, we've got a little coffee bar. And then here is just a little sitting area with a TV. And one bedroom through here. Beautiful fireplace. And a little bathroom. I'm going to turn the light on. There we go. A little bathroom area. Another bedroom through here, this way. This is the room that we're going to stay in with the green bathroom. Nice shower. Beautiful fireplace. Nice big comfy bed. And there's like a little kitchenette through here. There's Louie. There's a little kitchenette in here. Oh, this mansion has been several things since the Janet family owned it. It's been several businesses. It's been broken up into apartments like they did that a lot with these massive houses back in the 60s, 70s. They turned them into apartments, but they have been restoring this back to its former glory. They've removed walls that were put in, tried to get it back to its former glory self. But it's a fantastic place, full of history, and we can't wait. Just to, just to hang out here. Now, we are going to have dinner here in a little while. And I will vlog that place and show you that. Oh, I know what I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you what Nancy gave us in our little swag bag. Little bag of goodies from the R Richmond Wayne County Visitors Bureau. We've got, well, we had two waters with this Be Kind in Richmond, Indiana. But Mark got thirsty and drank one of them. <laughs> and this cute little bear. This is Be Kind in Richmond. This is Rebel Red. It's made in Eastern Ohio in the old schoolhouse vineyard and winery. And if you didn't know, we are very close to the Ohio border. Like we're like three minutes from the Ohio border. And then we've got some maple syrup. She had given this the last time we were here and it's so good. This is made in Hagerstown, which is in Wayne County. Pure Indiana maple syrup, with that nice wax seal. Daughtry Orchard Strawberry Preserves, yum. Also made here in Wayne County. These cute little Indiana earrings made by local artist Jesse Simpson. Another Be Kind in Richmond sticker. A great little swag bag there. This is Oatmeal and Honey Goat's Milk Potter's Soap and Such. Here made in Richmond, Indiana. And we had two cookies, but we ate one. <laughs> so these they were really, really good. They're made at the bakery on East Main Street in R Richmond, Indiana. So they were very good. We already ate one cookie, but that's our little swag bag. So we're going to get freshened up a little bit, and then we'll head down to dinner. And we might pop into a Goodwill or two. I don't know. We'll see what else we're going to do. But I'm probably just going to vlog the rest of the dinner, and then we'll get started with day two. All right, so we are having dinner at Firehouse Barbecue. Here in downtown Richmond, barbecue for the people. They're open Monday and Thursday, 11 a.m. to 9, Friday and Saturday, 11 to 10. It's in this old firehouse. 
barbecue and blues. So let's go on in. See the fire pole right there. We are going to sit in the section where we can listen to some of the music. Hi. Really cool. So I just wanted to show you, you can see here on the wall, Janet Records. So we started with an appetizer of stuffed jalapenos. They look yummy. We decided to share uh, some barbecue and two sides and then we're hoping to have room for some peanut butter pie so we'll see we're gonna mark's gonna try his pepper is that good the hot like temperature hot okay all right our food just arrived we shared this big plate of meat <laughs> and then cheesy potatoes <laughs> baked beans and then our peppers so we're gonna we're gonna dig in and hopefully we'll have room for peanut butter pie. I tend to like the sweet sauce, so cover that on there. That's so good, it's really tender too. Yum. All right, we saved room since we shared the entree. Now we've got peanut butter pie. It's a lot of chocolate on there, Michael. Michael, why did I call you Michael? What do you say? Green egg ham. Green eggs and ham and peanut butter. Pie. Why did I call you Michael? <laughs> We're gonna wouldn't eat them in a mouse. I would not eat them in a car. I would not eat them with the fox. Oh. Is it as good as my peanut butter? <laughs> I make really good peanut butter pie. Cool second. Yeah, I don't put chocolate on mine though. It's good. Well, I forgot to end the video. So we're back at the Janet Mansion and we are getting ready to turn in for the night. We have a long, busy day tomorrow filled with more events and activities, more along the lines of the fall. Things that you can do in Wayne County in the autumn time. Thank you guys so much for watching today. Stay tuned for part two of our adventure here in Wayne County, Richmond, Wayne County, Indiana, and I will see you tomorrow. Say good night, Mark. Good night. <laughs> Bye guys.